Today, you will hear from Hannah Matthews, the Director of Policy, Planning, and Research in the Division of Early Learning, and Tiara Washington, the Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund Program Manager. Before handing things over to Hannah and Tiara, I'll walk through our agenda for today. Next slide, please. We will start out today's session by sharing how the Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund will work in fiscal year 24. Then we'll detail the opt-in process for non-subsidy providers, meaning child development facilities that do not participate in the child care subsidy program. During this portion of the meeting, we'll give an overview of the fiscal year 24 early childhood educator pay equity fund application, talk about how to access the application in the division of early learning licensing tool, also known as DELT, and then we'll have a live demo. There will be time for Q&A before closing out. Please note that the session is geared towards leaders of child development facilities that do not participate in the subsidy program. If you operate a program that participates in the subsidy program, we held some separate information sessions earlier in the week for subsidy programs, and those programs will receive recordings of those sessions. Additionally, if you're an early childhood educator, we will have information sessions for individuals employed at child development facilities later this summer. And with that, I will hand things over to Hannah Matthews. Great, thank you so much, Julia. And hi to everyone who has joined uh, today's info session. So to begin um, the session today, I'm gonna share some background on how the Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund, um, also referred to as the Pay Equity Fund, uh, will work in fiscal year 24. Um, so again, please feel free to submit questions during the presentation. Um, in the Q, using the Q&A feature as Julia discussed. In fiscal years 22 and 23, as you likely know, the Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund, you know, Aussie partnered with AidKit to distribute direct payments to eligible early childhood educators. In accordance with recommendations of the Early Childhood Educator Equitable Compensation Task Force and the authorizing legislation, in fiscal year 24, OSSI will make a change. We will shift to distributing pay equity funds directly to child development facilities to increase compensation for early educators. This will be done through what we call a child development facility payroll funding formula, also known as the CDF payroll funding formula. What this means is that in fiscal year 24, early childhood educators will not receive direct payments through AIDKIT. Instead, educators will receive funds as part of their regular paycheck from their employer if the employer elects to participate in the program. To receive a CDF payroll funding formula award, a child development facility must be licensed by OSSI and must agree to pay eligible early childhood educators by position and degree salaries that meet or exceed minimum salaries that OSSI has established for fiscal year 24. Facilities that opt into fiscal year 24 of the Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund will receive quarterly payments calculated using the CDF payroll funding formula. Participating in fiscal year 24 of the Pay Equity Fund is optional. However, we highly encourage facilities to take part in this program and receive this extra funding for your employees. Child development facilities that wish to participate in the Pay Equity Fund in fiscal year 24 must opt into the program. And we are going to detail that process in today's session. In June, OSSI hosted two information sessions that were focused on that CDF payroll funding formula and the minimum salaries that OSSI has established. We encourage you to view recordings from those sessions to learn more about how the CDF payroll funding award will be calculated if you have not already seen them or were able to join us. You may also consider reviewing the frequently asked questions document for child development facility leaders this answers many questions that we've heard about implementation of the Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund 
beginning in fiscal year 24. Where we'll go ahead and drop links to the recordings that I mentioned, as well as that FAQ document in the chat. Please do check them out. And with that very brief overview, um, I will now hand things over to Tiara, who will share more information and really walk you through the process for non-subsidy providers to opt in to the Pay Equity Fund in fiscal year 24. Thanks so much, Tiara. Thank you, Hannah, and hello, everyone. I'm Tiara Washington, and I'm the Program Manager for the Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund. Today, I'll be walking you through the process for opting into the Pay Equity Fund in FY24. I would like to note that today's presentation is geared towards child care providers that do not participate in the child care subsidy program, which we'll refer to as non-subsidy providers. While the opt-in process differs for subsidy providers and non-subsidy providers, the Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund will operate the same for subsidy and non-subsidy providers. It is only the opt-in process that is different. The opt-in process for non-subsidy facilities. Child development facilities that wish to participate in FY24 of the Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund must opt into the program. The opt-in process should be completed by the person listed as the legal owner or operator of the facility. To opt in, there are two steps that a non-subsidy provider must complete. The first step, the provider must complete and submit an FY24 Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund application. Step two, um, complete an FY24 Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund Provider Agreement. If you operate multiple facilities, <clears throat> it is important to note that you do not need to complete an application for each site. In the application, you can select which facilities you operate that you would like to participate in the program. I'll walk you through how to do that a little later in the session. Uh, as Hannah noted, the CDF payroll funding formula payments will be issued quarterly. On this slide, you'll find some important deadlines for the program. To receive the first quarterly payment, facilities must have completed the opt-in slash application process by 5 p.m. on September 15th, 2023 and have an executed agreement by 5 p.m. September 30th, 2023. Once a child development facility has an FY24 Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund Provider Agreement or a Provider Agreement Addendum executed, they will automatically receive remaining FY24 quarterly CDF payroll funding, link, payroll funding formula awards if they continue to meet the requirements of the program. This means that if you complete the application and have an agreement executed in time for the first quarterly payment, you do not need to submit additional applications or agreements, <clears throat> but you must continue to meet the requirements of the program. Um, Programs newly entering into agreements will receive payments on the next quarterly cycle following approval of the provider agreement. For example, a provider who has an agreement executed after 5 p.m. September 30th, but before 5 p.m. on December 31st, 2023, would be eligible for a CDF payroll fund and formula award starting in quarter two which is March, 20, uh, March 2024. Providers will not receive retroactive payments for earlier quarters if the quarterly deadline is missed. Please note that application submissions are rolling. The application for FY24 will remain open until 5 p.m. on June 15, 2024. Facilities should be mindful of the quarterly opt-in application and agreement deadlines published in the chart here 
if they wish to participate in the program. Next, we're gonna walk through the application overview. <clears throat> the FY24 of uh, the Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund application for non-subsidy providers can be accessed and dealt. The application has four sections, review and confirm demographic information, read and acknowledge affirmations, submit required documentation, and identify the facility or facilities that wish to participate in the program. I'd like to highlight the three pieces of supporting documentation that must be submitted as part of the application. The required documentation includes an IRS employer identification number, um, which is also called an EIN confirmation letter, the IRS form W-9, and the district integrated financial system supplier approval documentation, which we also refer to the system as DIFFs. We'll share more information on where to find these documents on the following slides. We highly encourage providers to collect and complete these documents as soon as possible. The IRS EIN confirmation letter. Providers must submit a copy of their EIN confirmation letter <clears throat> as part of the application process. If you previously applied for and received an EIN for your business, but have since mis misplaced it, you can request your EIN from the IRS Business and Specialty Tax Line by calling this number here on the screen, Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The IRS W-9 form. Um, <clears throat> we will drop a link in the chat to where you can find this form. It is also located on the IRS website. Complete the form to, in order to provide your correct taxpayer identification number, also known as the, uh, the 10. DIFF supplier approval documentation. To participate in the FY24 Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund, the provider must be registered in the district integrated financial system also known as DIFFs. <clears throat> this system is managed by the DC Office of the Chief Financial Officer, and we will drop a link in the chat to where you can find step-by-step -step instructions on how uh, to register in DIFFs. If you have questions about registering in DIFFs, please contact OCFO. They can be reached via email at suppliers at dc.gov or via phone um, Monday through Friday between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. We will drop this information in the chat. <clears throat> After a provider has successfully registered in DIFFS, you'll receive an approval email from DIFFS or OCFO. Please save a PDF copy of the approval documentation email. This must be submitted as proof of successful DIFFS supplier registration. Please note that if you are already registered in DIFFS, do not create a new account. Please contact OCFO to request proof that you successfully are registered in DIFFS. If you are unsure if you already have a DIFFS account, please contact OCFO. Next, accessing the application in Dell. Before we get into today's demo, I'd like to first highlight an important step providers need to take to access the application in Dell. <clears throat> the application is to be completed by the person listed as the legal owner operator of the facility in Dell. Please note that in some cases, the person listed as the legal owner or operator of the facility is different from the contact listed as the facility contact in DELT. The contact information for the legal owner operator is found in the legal owner operator information section in DELT. If you need to change or update the contact information for the legal owner, operator, 
please contact your assigned um, licensing specialist. During the week of July 17th, the legal owner operator of each, um, I think next slide, please. So folks can, yep. During the week of July 17th, the legal owner operator of each facility in Dell was sent an email from QuickBase with a link that must be clicked in order to activate the provider profile and give you access to the application for FY24. If you are the legal owner operator of the facility, please look for an email sent from notify at quickbase.com with the subject line, invitation to the application. In the email, you see a box that says, go to this app in QuickBase. Click this link to activate the provider profile and gain access to the application. If you are listed as the legal owner operator and are unable to locate the email, please check your spam or junk folder. If the email is not in your spam or junk, please contact aussie.ecepayequity at dc.gov and we'll work to resolve the issue. Now, oops, sorry. Now we are going to demo the application and the messaging feature. Okay. You should be able to see um, my screen. And on the screen, you will find the dashboard um, for non-subsidy providers. On this screen is where you'll be able to find <clears throat> the button to enter into um, the dashboard for the pay equity application, as well as the messaging uh, button that we will go through in a few minutes. So first, in order to begin the application process, the provider would click on the pay equity button. It will then bring you to this home page where you'll find information about fiscal year 24 of the Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund, as well as some of the required documentation and links to reading material. At the bottom of this page, you will see a click to participate in pay equity button. Providers should click this button in order to be taken to the next page. Within this page is where you will see the provider's information, um, an eye icon and a pencil. In order to start the application, you would click on the pencil icon and it will bring you to the next screen where you will verify your demographic information, complete uh, and certify that you have read the appropriate affirmations. In the next section, you will upload the supporting documentation that we discussed. And underneath facility information, is where you will select which facility you would, uh, which facilities you would like to participate in FY24 of the Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund if you operate multiple facilities. At the very bottom of this page, you will find a submit button and a save button. Uh, we highly suggest that before you start the application, you gather the documents needed in order to complete the application. But for some reason, if you are unable to do it all in one sitting, please save your application uh, and come back to finish later before the deadline um, and then submit the application. So now I'm going to take you back to the main, uh, the home page where you can access the message feature.
So providers can click on the message button in order to create a new message, which you'll see up here in this top right hand part of the screen. Providers can click on this new message button in order to type and send um, a message pertaining to uh, questions, concerns, or challenges that you might be having completing your application process. You would type your subject, type the body um, of your email, and it will, once you click save and close, your email will come directly to us and we will respond uh, to your question or concern um, and reach out to provide assistance. And that is how you access and uh, complete the FY24 Early Childhood Educator uh, Pay Equity Fund application. Stop my sharing. Can you get out of here? One second. Thank you. I'm going to turn it back over to Rachel. If you are a non subsidy provider, and you have additional questions or require uh, additional support completing the FY24 Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund application, uh, we highly encourage you to use the message feature in DELT that, we, that I just demoed. Uh, providers may also email ic.ecepayequity at dc.gov to be connected with a support specialist. We'll also drop a link in the chat to the guide for non-subsidy providers with steps for completing the application. Thank you, Tiara and Hannah. Um, now we will, or before we move into our Q&A portion, um, we want to know what language everyone is attending today's session in. So we are going to launch a poll. Um, Oh, I guess we'll have two questions up. Um, so can you please tell us uh, what language you attended today's session in? Um, English, Spanish, or Amharic? And then you'll also see another question here on your screen. Does your facility plan to participate in fiscal year 24 of the Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund. We'll give folks a little bit of time to share their responses. All right, if you haven't answered the poll yet, we'll give you about another 30 seconds to do so. We do ask that you answer the language poll that helps us ensure that we are uh, making our services available in all the necessary languages. Alrighty, um, now we'll move into the Q&A portion of our call. Um, we do ask that folks use that chat feature that we talked about at the top of the screen. 
or not the top of the screen, at the top of the call. Um, we will use our time to focus on questions related to completing the application for fiscal year 24 of the, of the Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund. Um, if you have questions related to the implementation of the program, we will address those if we have time. Um, I'd also like to remind folks that you can email aussie.ecepayequity at dc.gov at any time for support. Um, and with that, let's hop into our question. Um, let's see, our first question, and I think this will probably be one for Tierra. When I log into Dell, I do not see an option to co complete the pay equity fund application. What should I do? Hi, so um, Julia, can you share that with me again? Can you say that for me again? Yes, the question was, when I log into Dell, I do mm -hmm. not see an option to complete the pay equity fund application. What should I do? Um, if you are the legal owner operator, you should have received an email um, with uh, from notify um, from notifyquickbase.com with instructions on how to access the application specifically. Um, so if you have not received that email, um, please reach out to us. Uh, well, first, please check your spam and email uh, your junk folder. If you are unable to locate that email, please reach out to us because um, in order to access the application, you do have to activate um, activate your profile. So uh, we're happy to provide some technical assistance if folks are having difficulty um, accessing the application. Okay. Um we have a question related to the agreement. Is the agreement the same as the affirmation? Um, I, I think this might be more related to the subsidy application where you need to click that you are interested. Actually, both have, have those. Um, so is there a difference between what the pay equity agreement is and this application process? Yes, so the uh, application process is one piece and then the agreement process is a separate piece. So if you um, are going through the application and it is requesting supporting documentation, um, certification of those affirmations, that is a separate process than the actual agreements. The agreements will come after you complete the application process. So after you go in and uh, verify that all your demographic information is correct. Once you certify each of those uh, affirmations, uh, submit any supporting documentation, and then uh, save uh, that application, the agreement will come after that step. So it's two different steps. The first step is completing the application where you, where you submit all of the supporting documentation. Second piece will be receiving the agreement. Got it. Um, and so we're getting some questions, uh, some folks wanting to know if they can talk with someone from Aussie about this program. If someone wants to arrange a meeting or a phone conversation with someone from the pay equity team, what's the best way to go about doing that? Please email us um, at the Aussie.ece pay equity email inbox and we will reach out to schedule time to call you um, or schedule a meeting. So please email that um, email inbox. And then there are some folks saying that they um, weren't able to either access the application in Dell or aren't able to find the email. Um, in which case, what should they do? So if you are the legal owner operator of uh, the facility, Please look through uh, your emails and try to locate an email from notify at quickbase.com. Uh, it may have gotten stuck in your spam or junk folder. Um, if you are still unable to locate that email, please email us uh, at the aussie.ece pay equity um, email inbox and we can help you uh, troubleshoot where uh, that email may have gone.
Um, another question that someone had, they're saying that um, the application in DELT led them to a subsidy program um, application, but they're not a subsidy program. So what should they do in that situation? Please send us an email so we can troubleshoot what is going on there behind um, in the back end. So please email us, ICECE Pay Equity um, at dc.gov, and we will help you with uh, resolving that issue. Thanks. Uh, let's see another one. So this person's saying, so to confirm, we will access the agreement after we submit an application. Is that right? Correct. You will receive the agreement after you submit the application. Yeah. Um, let's see, another question we have is, where exactly is the legal owner operated listed in DELT? Um, I can help with answering that question. In DELT, uh, there is a facility point of contact, but there is also a legal owner operator information section in DELT. And that lists the information for the legal owner operator and their contact information. Um, if you have questions about that, I would suggest reaching out to your assigned licensing specialist for support. Thank you, Julia. Um, we have some questions about folks wanting to know um, if they are, if your status as a subsidy provider changes, would you need to complete a different application? So I guess this would be someone who is currently a non-subsidy provider, but is interested in becoming a subsidy provider. Would they, if they're currently right now not participating in subsidies, should they still complete this application that we walk through today? Yes, if you are a non-subsidy provider, you should still complete the non-subsidy provider application. Um, and while simultaneously going through the process to become um, a subsidy, uh, to participate in the subsidy um, program. Hannah, we have some questions around the CDF payroll funding formula um, that, that maybe you can help address. Um, someone is interested in a little a, more background on what base pay means um, in the CDF payroll funding formula. Sure, so the CDF payroll funding formula has three main components. The core of the formula is what we call a base award. That base award is calculated based on the number of teachers or teacher assistants in a program and the credential that they hold. So what will happen is Aussie will look at the information in DELT and be able to apply a wage supplement for each eligible educator based on their role and credential. And that will be the basis for the base award in the payroll funding formula. In addition, we provide an additional 15% of that base award as an administrative enhancement, which provides additional resources to the facility to meet mandatory payroll taxes and other expenses. And for providers that participate in subsidy, there will be an equity adjustment as well. So additional resources for serving kids in the subsidy system. Thank you, Hannah. Um, we have a few questions that have come in. One about if we are able to offer support to facilities um, that might speak Spanish. Uh, Tiara, are you able to answer that question? Um, yes, we uh, are. Um, currently um, working to translate any materials that um, are currently not in Spanish, but we have translated materials posted on our website, um, as well as if you, e if you email our aussie.ece pay equity email inbox, we will be able to support you um, in um, Spanish. Uh, so please, if you are in need of um, assistance in a language, um, in any language other than English, please send us an email to that 
um, aussie.ece pay equity email inbox and we will work with you to get um, you materials and support in the language needed. Thanks, Tara. Um, I'm seeing some questions about what is a subsidy or subsidized program. Uh, a child care facility that participates in the subsidy program means that they uh, are able to accept uh, subsidies from families who participate in the DC child care subsidy program. So that would mean you are able to accept families who use vouchers to help pay for care. Um, in order to offer subsidized care, you must go through the process of becoming a subsidy provider. So the opt-in process is a little different for facilities based on if they offer subsidy or if they do not currently participate in that program. So that's what the difference is there. Um, let's see, if you all want to keep sending your questions through in the chat. Um, Hannah, do you want to um, talk a little bit more about the CDF payroll funding formula? Um, I'm seeing some follow-up questions on base pay. Sorry, I see a question here about um, what we mean when we say that programs need to pay teachers in their base pay. So I think what this question is getting at, as you obviously know, in fiscal years 22 and 23, pay equity funds were received as supplemental pay that came directly from aid kit. The program now, since we are providing the funds to early childhood programs directly, we are asking those programs to raise the wages or salaries of their employees to be able to meet the minimum salary requirements. So when we say that these pay equity funds need to be part of a individual's base pay, what we mean is you're not giving them quarterly bonuses or one-time pay supplements, you're actually increasing their regular wage or salary. In terms of how you do that within your facility, in terms of your payroll process, there's a question about whether or not the funds need to be separated out. You can feel free to do that. You are not required to do that. The requirement for the facility will be to be sure that any eligible educators are being paid salaries that meet or exceed those minimum salary requirements. Thank you, Hannah. Um, we're getting questions about when facilities that opt into the program will be required to start paying eligible lead teachers and assistant teachers the minimum salaries. Um, Hannah, could you speak more to that? Sure. We understand that programs will need to receive funds in order to be able to raise wages, so we will not be expecting any facility to raise wages until after the first quarterly payment is received. So if you opt into the program by those September deadlines and are receiving the first quarterly payment, you will need to raise wages in the second quarter of fiscal year 24. And can you remind folks when the funds will be distributed? Sure. So we can maybe even put that chart up again um, if it's easy to flip to. But if you are enrolled in the program by the first quarter deadline, so by those September dates, then you should receive a payment, your first payment in December and receive them on a quarterly basis going forward. And some questions about... Um reporting requirements or documentation. So what will be the reporting requirements for facilities that opt into the program and therefore receive uh, CDF payroll funding formula award payments? So what OSI is going to be looking for most importantly is those meeting those minimum salary requirements. So we will be providing more information as we go forward about what specifically, what kinds of payroll records you will need to show, but that's the information that we'll be looking at to make sure that your educators are being paid those minimum salaries. Thank you. Um, we have... Um, a question about the agreement. Folks are asking if a template or sample agreement is available. Um, Hannah, can you talk to that a bit more? 
Yes, please stay tuned. Uh, we are in the process of making sure a sample agreement is translated um, so that we can get it up in all of the languages appropriately. So that is going to be on our website in very short time. Um, we will let facilities know when those agreements are available online. Again, these will be samples so that you can see what is required in the agreement. The actual agreement that you complete and fill out will need to be done in English and is through the process that Tiara just showed. Uh, I see a question here uh, about inputting information in DELT. So this person is asking, will we have to input individual educators in the DELT system? Yes, facilities are required, regardless of participation in the pay equity fund, to keep up-to-date records on their staff in the Division of Early Learning licensing tool. Uh, for the purposes of this program, Aussie will share quarterly deadlines later this summer for facilities to make updates to DELT records in order for the information to be reflected in their CDF payroll funding formula payment. Um, but please remember, Aussie licensing regulations require all facilities to maintain up-to-date records in DELT. And if you have questions about updating records in DELT or aren't sure what documentation is required, I encourage you to reach out to your assigned licensing specialist. Um, in the FAQ that was also recently updated, you can find a listing of the documentation that should be in every staff record in DELT. Um, let's see. We have a question around the, again, the disbursement of funds. Um, so they're asking, will we receive funding from through December 24, December, 2024? Would that be the full 12 months? Can you, can you uh, reiterate those? Sure. So a facility, again, that opts in in advance of the first quarter will receive four quarterly payments. The first one will be in December of this year, 2023, um, another payment in March, June, and September. We will be recalculating the CDF payroll award formula every quarter at the beginning of the quarter based on the information in DELT. And that's because we know that some of these um, data points in DELT are fluid. So if your subsidy enrollment changes, if you have hired new staff, we wanna make sure that you receive the funding for those staff as well. So every quarter at the beginning of the quarter, we will run the CDF payroll funding formula, calculate the award and pay you um, once a quarter. Just as we talked about in the beginning, that facilities will not need to meet those minimum salary thresholds until after the first payment is received. If you hire new staff, you will not be required to meet the minimum salaries for those staff until after you've received the next payment that includes those staff in that award. Thanks, Hannah. Uh, another question related to how this the formula works in, in terms of payment. So will a facility CDF payroll funding formula award cover the entire cost of salaries for eligible staff to meet those minimum salary requirements? No, OSSI will be providing a supplement. So the idea is that you're currently paying your staff a salary. We're gonna give you additional funds to make up the difference between what's being paid now and those new salaries. Now, again, the wage supplements will be based on a district-wide average salary. Um, so we don't have that information on a facility basis, so we've made some estimates and have calculated the wage supplements. If folks want to know more about what those wage supplements are, I would encourage you to look at the links that we shared earlier in the webinar to the last information sessions that we did on the payroll funding formula, and all of the information is on our website that explains um, so that you can estimate how much your facility might receive in, in payroll awards. Thank you, Hannah. Um, another question about um, when, but this time when educators can start to see um, their, their payments. So they're saying uh, what month would educators see an increase or change in their pay should their employer opt into the program? 
So I would say on those specifics, I'd really encourage educators to speak directly with their employer, um, first of all, to encourage them to participate in the pay equity program and find out if they are in fact um, participating and plan to participate, what is their plan for raising salaries? As we said, we will not require those salaries to be raised until after that first payment in December is received, but the specific timing of when an actual paycheck will increase is really going to depend on the individual employer, so I would ask those questions specifically. Thank you, Hannah. Um, I'll encourage folks to continue to use the Q&A feature. We have um, some time left in our session. Um, is the pay equity fund program ongoing or will it only be implemented uh, in fiscal year 24? Um, and just a reminder for folks, fiscal year 24 begins on October 1st, 2023 and will end on September 30th, 2024. So this program was designed as a long-term program to raise the wages of early childhood educators in the District of Columbia. Those two years, fiscal year 22 and 23 of pay supplements were intended to be temporary in order to stand up this longer term um, program. So yes, um, this is an ongoing program and OSSI will continue to implement the program um, as we have the funding to do so on an ongoing basis. Um, just reading questions as they are coming through. Are minimum salaries the same thing as minimum wage? They are not. So again, um, I would urge you to take a look at those links that we shared at the beginning of the um, webinar. We have published a document that shows the minimum salaries for fiscal year 24. They are based on the DC public school salary scale that um, is part of the design of the program here. So programs that participate in the pay equity fund in fiscal year 24 will need to look at those minimum salaries and pay their teachers accordingly. If you do not participate in the pay equity fund, then you do need to meet minimum wage rules around pay, but will not need to meet those minimum salaries for educators. And could you speak a little bit more um, or adjust taxes? I don't think we've actually, we haven't adjust taxes yet. So who is responsible for paying taxes on these funds? So because facilities will receive these funds and then use them to increase the wages of their employees, um, the facility will need to pay mandatory payroll taxes just as they would on the regular pay of their employees. Um, this is the reason that we have included an administrative enhancement in the payroll funding formula so that we are providing additional resources to help facilities be able to pay for those additional um, tax liability. Thank you. Um, it looks like we have covered all of the questions that we have as of right now in the chat. Um, I see that there's a question about how the signature process will take place with the agreement. Um, facilities that complete the application will learn more about the exact process for completing the agreement um, in the coming weeks. So please be on the lookout for more information there. Um, with that, I think that we will move um, to closing. So thank you to everyone who joined us today and who responded to our polls. Um, as we close here, I would like to remind everyone about the submission deadlines for fiscal year 24 of the Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund, which are found on this slide. So please remember that the deadline to complete and submit an application in DELT uh, to be eligible to receive a CDF payroll funding formula award payment for quarter one of fiscal year 24 is 5 p.m. on Friday, September 15th, 2023. And then the deadline to have an executed agreement is by 5 p.m. on Saturday, September 30th for a facility to receive a CDF payroll funding formula award for quarter one. So please remember that it is a two-step process uh, to opt in. 
uh, if we can go to the next slide. For more information on the fiscal year 24 uh, Early Childhood Educator Pay Equity Fund, please visit the Aussie website. We will include a link in the chat uh, to that webpage where you can find supplemental materials uh, such as the CDF payroll funding formula, minimum salaries and salary schedule, an FAQ for facility leaders, and a guide for completing the fiscal year 24 application for non-subsidy providers. Um, and finally, we encourage folks who have questions or would like technical assistance to reach out to that email address we've mentioned throughout today's meeting. That's aussie.ecepayequity at dc.gov. Language um, support is available in multiple languages, so please reach out and we'll make sure that you get the support that you need. And thank you all for joining today's session. A recording of today will be shared um, in the coming days. And also just a reminder, we will be hosting this session again on Monday, July 31st at 7 p.m. The content will be the same, but if you have questions that you think of um, between now and then, feel free to join, uh, or you can, again, send them to us via email. So thank you, everyone. Have a great day.